to biggest fear that it doesn't record. That would be terrifying. Um, <laughs> so everybody's coming in right now. The gates are open. They're flooding in. I'm just going to give it a few seconds here just to let everybody come in, but this is so exciting. This will be fun. Okay. I'm going to <laughs> see. I'll start. I'll just start going here. I'm going to open my little Q and A. So I have that ready to go, but since we're right on the dot, we are on time. Welcome, everybody. Welcome as everyone's joining in. Um, I am so excited for this webinar today because we have two amazing speakers who I will introduce uh, shortly here in just a couple minutes. Um, but again, we're so excited for you to join us here today. And I'm really looking forward to um, these presentations uh, that both of our speakers are going to share with us. They are the go-to email marketing gurus. So Aww. we found the right people. So this is great. <laughs> You've come to the right place, everybody. Um, so no, it's super awesome. And I'm just so, so excited. Um, but first, just to quickly introduce myself, if there's anyone new to Travify Academy, um, I am Stephanie Grice and I am the education and marketing coordinator here at Travify. Um, but also the one thing that I want to talk about too, is that um, if this is your first time at a Travify Academy webinar, um, really what this this is for is we just want to host this particular webinar to help inspire new ideas for email marketing and just get an inside peek at how two brilliant travel pros um, are marketing to their new and old clients. Um, and I'm sure you're going to get so much information here today. Get your notebooks, your pencil pads ready. Um, there'll probably be tons of good tips coming out of here. Um, but the one thing too, that's really good is that during this webinar, we're going to give each president or each speaker um, the chance to give a short presentation, just kind of on their email marketing playbook. Um, and then um, we'll have hopefully time at the end for Q&A as well. So when you think of a question, please put it in there um, because I will be collecting those during the webinar. So then at the end, we can um, go over all of those. Um, but the other thing too that I want to mention is with Travify Academy, um, like I said, if this is your first time joining us, what Travify Academy is for is really just to be a free educational resource to further Travify's mission to power the success of travel and professionals. So during this webinar, you're not really going to hear about Travify. Well, you might. Sometimes it pops in every once in a while. We we don't mind if it pops in, um, but we don't really talk about the product during this. This is really just to help you grow your business. Um, so that's what this is for, just educational resources, really. Um, but you can always find um, webinar replays, including this one um, later today, but then other articles, helpful content, podcasts, all kinds of stuff um, at academy.travify.com. And be sure to like us on our Facebook page too, just to stay up to date on all the information and see all the latest um, webinar replays and podcasts podcast episodes too. Um, now, okay, with all that being said, I know it's always a mouthful, you got to get it out of the way. Um, but to introduce our speakers here today. Um, so first, we have Penny Cooper, who is a family travel specialist at Embrace the Magic Travel. So welcome, Penny, we're excited to have you here today. Um, and then we also have Danielle Dybeck, who is president of Nine Muses Travel. And she's actually been on our podcast before. So you might see a familiar face there. <laughs> So we're so excited and, and thank you so much again to both of you for being here today and taking time to share your expertise with us. Um, but again, and Penny, I'm going to let you take over here in a second, because as I mentioned here, um, each speaker is going to give about a 15, 20 minute presentation and just really walk us through what their email marketing playbook looks like. And when we say playbook, we mean just, you know, what do they do? What is there? Is there any formula there? You know, all the all the tips and tricks and all that good stuff. So it'll, it'll be lots of good stuff. And this is really going to help you take your email marketing, um, you know, to new heights into 2022 because we're like a month away, which is crazy. Um, and beyond it's so insane, but I'm excited. I'm still ready for 2022. Um, so, um, so first we're going to start off with Penny from Embrace the Magic Travel, and then we'll come back to you, Danielle. So Penny, I will let you go ahead and share your screen and let you take it away there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so much. I've been so excited. So let's see. Share. There we go. I can see it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I've been looking forward to this so much, Stephanie. Thanks for having me on here. Yes, thank you. And I wanted to give a shout out to um, Danielle's and I, GTN friends, as well as the collaborative mastermind groups that are here to support me today. I really appreciate that. Um, I am the
the owner of Embrace the Magic Travel, lead travel advisor there. We specialize in family travel with an emphasis on Disney World vacations. Um, I am also co-founder of Magic Made Simple. A, we specialize in written for you email templates for your email marketing. So travel is my second career. I came from a corporate America Fortune 100 company, and I brought my love of um, marketing and all the tech and everything into my entrepreneur entrepreneurship roles. Um, and so I just, I love that you have tagged me for this topic today. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, it ended. Wait, we're not there yet. What happened? I like that was a very quick presentation. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Oh, let's see. I don't want to have to do it that way. I think I'm going to have to start here again. My apologies. And, and try not to click that again. Let's do it this way instead. There we go. Okay. So there's so many topics when Stephanie and I first chatted about email marketing. I was like, gosh, there's so many topics under the heading of email marketing. Um, I knew if with only 20 minutes, I needed to pare it down. So I really turned to my passion which is email automation. Um, and so today we're gonna to take a, a look at some different types, some sample emails that I send out as part of that, and then a quick look at some tools that really help um, you know, make sure that the process uh, goes smoothly. So the first thing I wanted to do was talk about, um, when we talk about email marketing, there's a few things that, particularly email automation that comes to mind for me, and that is the content, the call to action, and then where my clients are in the process. So it all depends on which stage the client is in as to what email marketing and automation um, sequence that they go through. So let me explain um, what that looks like for me. So all the way from when I bring them in from a, you know, a wonderful IFO and I'm gathering my leads through advertising, all the way through the nurturing sequence, through the booking process, and then as they become clients and I'm prepping them for their trip and then they return and then I just cycle back through again and create, you know, um, put them right back into that lead and prospect. So because I wanna plan the next trip for them, um, those are the, the client journey, that's my client's journey. Um, and so I have email marketing automations that match each of those stages. Um, and so, this is what that looks like. So my, uh, the very first one is where you bring in a client through an IFO and you have a delivery sequence that you want to give to them. Um, an IFO is an irresistible free offer, also known as a freebie or a lead magnet. It's that great content that you put out that you're looking to gather names, you exchange it for an email address. And I find that a lot of people um, you know, they, they really focus more on the IFO than they do on the delivery sequence that comes after it. So I encourage you to really think about um, that delivery sequence. And in fact, we're going to do a little in-depth review of that in just a few minutes. This is the place that your client or your lead, sorry, is asking you to share more about your brand. They are the most in tune with you because they've asked you for something. So they are going to read whatever you send them. Um, this is where your relationship building starts. And uh, this is actually one of my favorite places to be with my clients because I love to just serve them where they are and then help them learn about my story and my company and you know the things that I can help them with. That puts them right into a nurturing sequence. So if they don't immediately pop into the, okay, I'm ready to let's start talking about your process and booking my vacation, then they may have to go through a period of nurturing where I continue to provide them, you know, really good content, really good information, build that know, like, and trust. Um, I can help answer some of the questions that they might have, or, and I'm always, of course, uh, providing a call to action to help move them to those next steps, which is more of a process section of, of the client journey. This is where I am moving them from, okay, let's schedule a call and let's chat and make sure that we are a good fit for each other for your vacation. And then here's the 
way you can pay my planning and support fee. And then, then the next step would be, here's how we start quoting and we actually start booking the components of your vacation. So each of those steps along the way, there's an automation that I have that I can build out for them. Um, and it also takes care of that really oh so important follow-up. I hear lots of travel advisors talk about how many times do you follow up with a client and oh my gosh, you know, this person came in on a Saturday night and I forgot to add them to my whatever list and I forgot and I haven't followed up with them. So if you have an email automation built out, that follow-up is natural. It automatically happens as long as you tag them and you put them in your system, that's going to happen and you, you don't even have to think about it again. So it takes a lot of that busy work off your plate. Once they become a client and you've booked their vacation, of course, there's a series of questions that you've answered over and over again for all your clients, right? Um, as you prep them. So this is a, a way that you can get all of those um, tasks and those emails set up into a sequence um, so that nothing ever slips through the cracks. It's also a place where you can level up. And you can um, help your clients with some of your favorite restaurants or your insider knowledge. Those things, again, that you want to send out over and over again, you just sort of build into your process. And then last but not least is when the clients come back and you want to then start planting the seeds for the next trip that they're going to go on um, or your referral program. Or you're going to also talk about, you know, make sure that those memories live on a little bit longer. So you talk to them about their favorite photos from the trip or a favorite recipe that they can recreate there in their home. So these are ways that you can build in some of those touch points to let them know that you care about their, their memories as much as you cared about, you know, planning their, their trip. And you'll see the arrow points back over to nurturing. As I mentioned before, I put them right back into that nurturing. And sometimes that means going into my weekly easing which is just something that I send out on a weekly basis that's outside of an automation. Um, but I use that to, again, build know, like, and trust, share a little bit about my family, my, the inside, you know, look at the, the Embrace the Magic travel community and, um, you know, just keep in front of my audience on an ongoing basis. All right. So I said I would take, give you a little insider look into the delivery sequence of the, an IFO and five emails that I use um, to send out after I send out that really you know, awesome content that I've created. So when you think about gathering those leads and you're building your, your IFO, of course that you're always looking for what the client wants because what they're looking for, what they think they want is what you're delivering to them through the IFO, and then you have to get it to them. But it doesn't end once you send them that content. You wanna to continue to follow up with them. So you're, you're validating and acknowledging the questions that they have through the IFO, and you can follow that up with you know, that first email. Then the, then the next one is, this is where you address what they need. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Sometimes they want one thing. They want to know how to plan something easy, but what they need are the details and they need the touch points and the questions that they need to ask and how to dig a little bit deeper and get more in depth, um, you know, to the conversation for, for what the destination they're going to or what they're trying to book. So this is a place where you can be really helpful. You can deliver another IFO. Um, you can deliver, you know, a link to a blog post that you've written, some articles that you've um, been part of, a YouTube video, just something to take them and, and help them recognize, okay, I've gotten what I asked for. Now I'm getting even more because Penny or you know this, my travel advisor knows a lot about this destination and she's passionate about it. And this is really what I'm looking for, someone to help me out. The third email that I sent out, is where, again, it's all about building that know, like, and trust so that they get to know me a little bit better. They're coming to me for my service, right? Um, I don't need all the clients. I just need the ones that, you know, connect with me and that resonate with me. And so that happens through me sharing about my story and sharing things um, like my Facebook page so that they can see me on social media. Or, you know, if you have a YouTube channel or a podcast, sharing those things that show that you are an authority, an expert in, you know, your, your niche. Um, this is a great place to, to share that. 
The fourth email is where I ask them to take um, an action. It's not always about making the sale. That action could be as simple as, hey, would you like my Facebook page? Or, hey, would you, um, would you schedule a call with me? You know, after we've known each other for a little while, I want to start getting them to that booking process stage. And the first thing that I do is I ask them to schedule a call with me so we can chat one-on-one -on -one and make sure that we're a good fit for each other. So um, as I cycle through, because these, these five emails are what I call rinse and repeat. So it starts with the IFO and I go through five, but then I find another topic that they might think they want. And I cycle through this again, and that's how the, this becomes a nurturing stage. So in each point, I can all ask them to do one more thing, take one more step towards you know, making that phone call and uh, working with me. And then the last email that I sent out in this five points uh, series is uh, an opportunity to give them feedback to me. Tell me about where you are. Are you still just um, price shopping? Are you still, um, you, do you already know the dates that you wanna go? You ask them some kind of question that they can give you. It's not a yes or no answer that they can give you some feedback on um, so that you know where you can point them to, particularly if you have multiple nurture sequences that you can send them through. This helps you guide to you know, where you're gonna put them next. Okay, so if you have all these great emails, if you have all these great sequences, you're going to need a place to house them. So I did want to just take a quick moment and talk about um, building out your automation series. Um, you, like with anything, you can do this on a shoestring. You don't have to invest in immediately, for sure, in um, you know really expensive software. You can, I started with um, Google scripts is what it was called, I think. And I just did it straight out of my, um, you know, Google Gmail, especially when it came to my client care um, sequences that I built out because those were the first ones. But as I started doing advertising and marketing and started getting in um, multiple leads a day, I wanted to automate that. And so when you're looking for an automation system and there's plenty out there that are very um, uh, that are wonderful and will fit your needs but just be sure that you're looking for a couple of things you want to make sure that you have some date triggers so that you can time everything correctly um, something something that you can modify the client the client profile details so that you can put in some specific dates and touch points that you want to hit for them um, tagging is always great so that you can then personalize the content that's sent to them, as well as you want to be able to move seamlessly from one automation to the next automation through just some triggers that you've, you've built in. I'm just looking to see if I've got any more notes on, on that. I think that's it. All right. So um, if this sounds intriguing to you, if email automation is part of your marketing plan sounds intriguing and you wanted to know more about the sequences that I've built out, I wanted to um, bring you an IFO today uh, so you can actually see it in action. So we have something you can use the um, QR code. I think, Stephanie, you're going to pop the link in the chat as well. And um, it's just going to, it's a, just a quickie handout that's got the six um, email automation system sequences, as well as those five, you know, recap of those five emails that I chatted about. And so now I get to the thank you page. Thank you, Stephanie, so much for allowing me to share today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for the freebie. I um, put it in there. I put it in the chat. So that is where everybody can find it. And people are like, thank you. And yeah. we have some questions coming in too, but I will hold off on those. And um, Danielle, I'll let you take it away from here. Thank you, and then Penny. We'll continue, continue. What, what a beautiful presentation. That was really, really cool. And I think we pair really nicely for this presentation. You did a really nice job, Stephanie, because we represent two different philosophies, I think, on doing uh, emails with clients. So Penny very beautifully laid out automation as a way to do it, which is perfectly valid and wonderful and, and always so many benefits with that. And then on the other spectrum where I write original content each week, um, the only automation that goes to my email list is if they subscribe on my website, they all get the same welcome email 
um, because my IFO is a like a pre-customized like online packing list. And so when they sign up for that, they'll get a response with what they requested and a little welcome. Um, and then they automatically go to my subscriber list, which I'm adding to throughout the week after every trade show event, any any kind of event um, where I'm gathering contact information, people share that information. I do an upload to my contact list. The email list is your is your gold standard of how you have your clients' information. As we've all seen, Facebook or Meta or whatever it is now, that can go away tomorrow. LinkedIn, their server could crash. You know, not that when none of these things are happening, because we like multiple ways of reaching our clients. But at the end of the day, your email list is your email list. And you have that always. That's not going offline. You control that list. Um, and so my weekly newsletter is called Muse News. <laughs> I don't know why when I say it, I have to say it like that. It's Muse News. Um, um, and it goes out Tuesday mornings, uh, every Tuesday since January 1st of 2019, without fail. Um, Penny and I are both members of Gifted Travel Network. Um, so I do want to not really plug them, but definitely praise them. Well, I mean, I don't mind plugging them. <laughs> They're a really wonderful host agency and they have a training program for new advisors or even new business owners, let's put it that way, called the Travel MBA. And I'm a graduate and Penny, you might be a graduate as, no, she's not, she was already a pro. I had never owned my own business before I did the Travel MBA. And so it teaches you not only, I had much travel industry experience, but I'd never owned my own business. So they talk you through that. Um, one of the main things that we all stress in Gifted Travel Network is having a weekly newsletter. Um, however you go about it, some people hire um, copy editors and content writers because they don't feel confident in writing. They're not, mm, it's not their strength. And there are people who, who do that and they'll write in their voice. I have always enjoyed creative writing and writing has always been an outlet for me from as long as I can remember. So writing my original content each week is a joy for me and I really enjoy it. But there's a kind of a formula that they um, stress is pretty important and I followed it, um, the gifted travel network way, <laughs> which is, it's quite simple really. Um, the first section is something, pers it's, it's you're writing about you, your personal, life uh, experience, but not um, too personal. You don't be like, you don't have to talk about what you had for breakfast that morning or, or you know, what dates stood you up that, I mean, not that level of personal, but something that lets people in to see who you are, who, why, why, not why, but how you're uniquely you. You're the only you, you know? So you can talk a little about your philosophy, your approach, what travel trade, event you went to. If you're traveling, talk about that. Um, and then I have a middle section I call the bridge and it, that's always kind of changing. It could be, uh, right now it's featuring a group group space I have on a 2023 on the waterways cruise that's classical mu music themed. And then the third section is a featured article. And I think this is where a lot of people get tripped up um, because they're like, oh, that's so much writing and I'm not an expert on everything. And um, sometimes I'll write the whole article, um, more often than not, I will write a little introduction and then I'll, uh, link to, well, I'll, I'll copy from a virtuoso article or some other article, uh, gifted travel network is a member agency of virtuoso. It's a luxury travel consortium of global worldwide partners that are phenomenal. Um, and they have really wonderful marketing content. A lot of it's automated too. Some of my Facebook and LinkedIn posts come from Virtuoso and it's great content. Um, and so I'll think of a destination or something I personally want to write about. I'll look around Virtuoso, find an article. I'll write my own introduction to it, sort of why, how it relates to me, why I think it's interesting. And then I'll say, you know, you can, this is an excerpt. I usually don't include the whole thing. I'll say, this is an excerpt. Here's where you find the link. And then I'll put the article. So you don't have to do so, all the writing. <laughs> there are ways you can incorporate, um, you know, linking back to others. And then there's some static parts of the email and I'll do a share screen in a moment. But the gist of it is it's a weekly newsletter and you think that that's all it is, but mine is 
so much more. First of all, why you should do weekly marketing through a newsletter, through an uh, uh, email newsletter, is if you're a home-based or internet business, you have no storefront. Nobody can see the I'm open for business sign. No one can see your lights are on. That weekly communication is showing people that your lights are on. That's your light switch. That's showing people you're still in business. And that's why I kept writing it through a global pandemic because people were curious, you know, how are you managing, how are you owning a travel business when nobody can travel? I mean, in March, what, 11th or so, I remember watching the press conference, flights aren't going to Europe anymore as of next week. And I'm like, what? Like, we can't, that's a thing. We can just like not go to Europe. Like they can do that. Like that's now a thing that we know that could happen. So the newsletter during those months actually became um, something much more than here's me talking about my business. It became an opportunity to acknowledge that I'm a human. We're all living through a trauma together. Luckily, I enjoy writing so much and it was quite cathartic. I, um, in preparing what I would talk about for this presentation, I went, actually went back and I was reading my March and my April and my May 2020 newsletters. And I, I thought I would do a share screen, but honestly, I, I don't think I could show them to you because I got very emotional reading them. They were, um, yeah, they were very heartfelt and very sincere and very encouraging. And through that time, I've had people write to me and say like, you are a shining light in the storm and I barely know you, but these newsletters are keeping me positive. I mean, it became so much more than just I'm selling travel, right? <laughs> like, like I'm just not, I'm not just selling travel with that newsletter. I'm sh it's the no like, and trust. I, I wanted them to continue to know me, what I was going through. Uh, I hope people like me and we all want, we all want to be liked, honestly, <laughs> everybody wants to be liked, but I also wanted them to trust me. And a big part of that too, is I'm not going to sell you something you can't go on. Like I'm going to, you're going to, I want you to trust me because I have your best interests in mind. Always. We're never going to sell you, you know, book you on a trip. That's going to put you in danger or that you're going to be uncomfortable with. Um, and the reason why you continue marketing too, is especially now for anyone who's thinking of going into travel or starting a travel business before March of 2020, not every living being on earth was talking about travel, where you can go, how you can do it, how to go about it. Literally every person on this earth is now talking about where can I go? How can I do it? And like, that's what we do. That's our value that we add as a, as a business, as people, as travel advisors, like everybody needs our services now. And it's not, salesy to, you know, um, to put that forward. It's you're, you're offering your knowledge and your expertise and your care and people need that more than ever. So don't be shy about that. Um, so with my Muse News, um, I want to share, I'm going to read a short email that I, I got on September 28th of this year, September 28th, 2021. Dear Danielle, I don't know how I got on your email distribution list sometime during the past 18 months, but I am so glad that I did, exclamation point. I have enjoyed your Muse News each week and admire the authenticity with which you write. There are not too many e-newsletters that I look forward to weekly. Most just go straight to my delete folder, but I always look forward to your musings, no pun intended. That's her saying that. I know how challenging things have been but you remain focused and committed to your business and to staying connected and inspired. I am compelled to drop you this line to say congratulations and also to wish you a fantastic trip to Tuscany. Um, and that was a newsletter where I was talking about how he's going to Tuscany. Um, and the reason, first of all, those words are everything that I had hoped I was conveying. This is like, my wildest imagination would write this email. I was, God, I still am, yeah, it's fantastic that email. <laughs> but I also want to say, I've never talked to this person um, in person or on the phone even. Um, I do know how she got on my email distribution list because um, I know that. Um, but it was at a large trade show. Um, 
And the reason I told you the date of the email is September 28th, 2021. I added her to my list January 13th of 2020. And that's the first time I've heard from her. It's the first time she's heard directly from me. But if you think your emails aren't powerful that go out, just use that as, as one example. And it's been almost two years. So it's a really powerful, powerful thing. And consistency is everything too. You keep your lights on and just be authentically you. You're the only you. People want to know who they're doing business with. Um, the more that you can convey what makes you different from every other travel advisor, um, that helps the clients because maybe they're not interested. Maybe, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of Disney. I, I will admit that. I have no problem admitting that. Penny does. Penny's like, I don't know. There are things with Disney. There's like secret doors and trap doors. And there's like private restaurants. And like, there's like, I don't know, Mickey secret lair of like awesomeness. And like, Penny knows where that door is. I don't know. There's a lot going on in Disney. But um, yeah. And um, the way I also look at my subscriber list and my emails is I treat everybody in that email, in the tone of that email, as though they're my client. And they just haven't booked a trip yet. They're, I treat them all like my clients. I have like 4,000 clients is how I think about it. They just don't have a booked a trip yet. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, the, the wonderful woman who wrote me, maybe two years from now, she'll book a trip. That's okay. They're all my clients in my opinion. And if they want to unsubscribe, they can, they can do so. If they're along for the ride, I'm happy to have them. If they even just get inspired to think about travel, well, then I'm helping the industry. You know, like it all is positivity in my opinion. The one, so with marketing, how I use this newsletter, it's one email that I write a week, but it becomes my themed marketing for, it feeds marketing for my entire week. I split that up, the first part of it and the last part, they each become a blog post that goes onto my website. So that increases my SEO. So I get two posts every week. And again, if someone just goes to my website, nimusestravel.com slash blog, uh, they can see the lights are on. Someone's posting this content. It's timely. She's talking about things that are current events. Uh, I, yeah, she's, this is present day activity that this business is engaging in. Um, I then take those blogs and I will repurpose them and put them on Facebook, LinkedIn, and personal, my uh, Facebook, F Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, and now I just became more active on Instagram with the business. So now I just learned today how to figure that out, how to do a blog post with, you have to do an image. You can't do an image and a link at the same time. You have to like, you can post the image and then just write the link. I don't know. I figured it out. But anyway. But you, and you can automate those on Facebook and Instagram. So you don't have to, um, it's not so time consuming is what I'm trying to say. Then with, and then I also take the whole link to the Muse News and I put that on my Facebook personal and um, business. So they can click and read the whole newsletter if they want to. So already right there, I mean, how many posts have I just talked about? And that's all from what, the one newsletter I wrote. Um, and through the pandemic, one of the things I added was, I realized I was watching tons and tons more webinars because I had more time. And I was learning about all the new, um, like I was watching lots of hotel webinars about how they were responding to the pandemic. And I realized, oh, my clients don't know how much I know. So what would be nice and visual? So I do one Wanderlust Wednesdays and I pick a virtuoso property and they have beautiful images on their profile of virtuoso. So I use their images um, if I have current information from a webinar, I might incorporate that, but lately it's, um, like their own descriptions on their portfolio, their profile on Virtuoso. And I'll kind of like put it in my own words. I'll kind of pick out the highlights that I think are most interesting and important. I tweak it a little bit, but I use their images and so that's Wanderlust Wednesday. So now that's Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, beautiful imagery. And on LinkedIn, I'll tag the hotel group, the hotel name, and all the client, all the, all the virtuoso contacts that are listed in the virtuoso profile, like the sales rep, the general manager, if they're listed there, I'll tag them on LinkedIn. And I always say sending love from Brooklyn, you know, at, 
uh, whatever hotel, at general manager, at whoever. And then I connect with all of them. So I'm building my network. I'm building my rapport. It's showing to my clients, oh, she's she's connected. She knows these people. The hotels are like, thank you for the free publicity. That's really nice of you. Thank you. And it's all their own words and content. So it's not like you're going to get in trouble. You know, it's like you're marketing their own. You're, you're helping them do their job, really. Like they're grateful. Everyone's a win-win there. And so right there, just with the newsletter, um, I've got a whole themed week of social media content. And I choose the Wanderlust Wednesday Hotel based on something in the newsletter. So for this week, I wrote about skiing a particular region. And then I picked a different hotel in France for the Wanderlust Wednesday that went out yesterday. And so it's like this whole social marketing like themed week. 99.9% of that came from that one newsletter that I wrote. So that's why, <laughs> that's why we love the Muse News. Um, I save all the comments when people write in, if someone takes the time to write an email, like, like that incredible, like I should frame that. Honestly, I might, I might just like frame that and hang that like next to my, <laughs> it's so good. Um, that, you know, you can say, oh, I'm too busy to write this newsletter, but take a little time, write it once a week. I schedule it. Um, it's automated to go out Tuesday mornings for a reason. I know that it gives me the whole weekend to write it. And if I'm traveling on the weekend, it still gives me by Monday night to write it. Um, so that's just my personal lifestyle. I didn't do research into like, when are the most reliable open rates for a newsletter and yada, yada. I'm like, this is when I know I can write it <laughs> and I need to be consistent. So this is when it's going out. <laughs> um, so I think that's, Oh, I could show you. Do we have time for me to show you? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Yeah. Can you uh, share that? Because it's really cool. Oh, can you? And there's so also just, somebody, by the way, who said um, that they love getting your newsletter and that's how they learned about your monthly cooking series. Oh, that was like a little lockdown life special, special time. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. When, when nobody was traveling and we were all just stuck at home, like, I want to, I just don't want to engage my clients somehow. So yes, I partnered with Eat With and they had cooking classes taught live from some, from kitchens around the world. So we did a Thai cooking class with a woman in Thailand. We did like Mexican guacamole and we made our own tortillas with a woman in Mexico city. Yeah. Those are really fun. That's cool. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to show you this week's newsletter. Um, Cause this one won't make me weepy. I mean, I thought about showing you the ones from March and April of last year. And like, honestly, you can go to my website, nine Mises travel and then backslash, you know, hash, slash blog and just like keep scrolling down. You'll, you'll find them. Um, I, I reposted a lot of that, that material. Um, and, and truly it's a chronicle. I mean, I'll always have that to look back at. It's a chronicle of how we got through a, a global pandemic. Um, so this is, can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So this is all kind of static here at the top. It's Muse News. And then I just put the date and my subject line is always Muse News and the date. So it's, it's That's very nice. easy. It's searchable. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Um, and then this is always an image that I change. It usually links to my, um, I usually hyperlink it to my Virtuoso profile. But for this week, I hyperlinked it to our webinar that we're watching right now. Um, I always throw in a little quote just because I like that. There was, there was an email I used to get and they always had a quote. I think it might've been asked as emails uh, a long time ago. And I just, I remember I always liked the quotes. I'm like, I want that in my newsletter. And so this is the top section. This is kind of an average length. Sometimes they're a little longer. This is kind of average. Um, like, you know, just what I'm up to. Like I'm going to the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce Gala. I bought a table for the first time. The governor is going to be there. Um, I usually throw in like, lately I've been throwing in where my clients are traveling to and, you know, just like a little, hey, I'm your travel advisor. Remember, you can book travel as well. Um, then this is the what I call the bridge. This, this middle section, can change, but this is where right now I'm talking about um, an Alma Waterways uh, group uh, that I have booked. And this links, this hyperlinks to a YouTube, um, like I had a, uh, a webinar with 
on the waterways. And I, now it's on YouTube. By the way, if you feel so inclined, could you go to YouTube for Nine Uses Travel? Because I'm like 30 or so people away from getting my own URL <laughs> name. And so that's just like a little plug for that, please. That'd be so great. I'll, Thank add, you. It, I'll add it to the article on okay, academy.travify.com. You can find oh, it. Oh, thanks. Because <laughs> <laughs> right now it's like YouTube, Nine Uses Travel, X, Y, Q, blah, 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 like this whole long yeah, list of things. Yeah. Um, a, a question Let's... for you really quick, since you're going through this and same for you, Penny, is because um, someone asked this is what, um, what software do you both use to design your newsletter? Um, this is through Wix. So my website okay. is on Wix. Um, yeah. And I use their Wix images. Um, if like this is Courchevel, France. If I don't, I said France, like Fro fancy, <laughs> fancy, yeah, well, so fancy, yeah, it's fancy. Um, if they don't have images, then I go to Pixabay because those are free. Oh, yep. Um, images you can use that aren't copyrighted. Um, same here. Uh, but yeah, mine mine's through Wix. Oh, awesome. What about you, Penny? I use Acta Campaign both for my automations and also my weekly easing that goes out. So active campaign. Nice. And one other question too here is um, how can both, how can people sign up for both of your newsletters so that they can see more examples like this? Oh, what a nice question. So glad you asked. I know. Let's just put, the, yeah. How, how can we get this? So Danielle, <laughs> I'll let you go first since you have this open. Uh, it, it might be Penny's answer too. If you go to our website, there's probably going to be a box that pops up with uh, asking you to subscribe. <laughs> That'd be the, the, the fastest, easiest way. Yeah, mine comes up after nine seconds. I believe it's still oh, cool. like my little inside joke because it's nine uses travel, but yeah. <laughs> I love it. So if you um, click that QR code and you um, downloaded the six workflow automations, you're going to be on the Magic Made Simple uh, list already. If you're interested in the Embrace the Magic Travel, I'm actually trying to think, Danielle, if I have a generic one, because I use IFOs more to target, you know, and make sure I keep people on the correct email list for them. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure I have an IFO on my front page. And, or I know I definitely have a, con you know, a contact me section. So you can always just, you know, put your name and email in that contact me box and I'll, I'll be sure to add you on my weekly list. Yeah, yeah. Everyone should go do that. Then that's, you can really see it all in action. Yeah. I see yeah. someone said, I, I use the term IFO a lot. It's irresistible free offer. Same thing as a freebie, or you may know it as a lead magnet. Yeah. Should I stop sharing my screen? So, 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 oh, no, uh, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, and one out. thing, well, what's one thing that's really cool. So, um, that these are the spots that you always have, right? Like at the bottom. Oh yeah. This so is all static. To... So static, yeah. from, from this little line down, almost like it was a press release kind of thing <laughs> from here down, this is all static. Um, cool. that's, that makes it easier. Yeah. That's nice. And then I kind of play with this. Like this is a new picture for me in Tuscany. And then I'm always like, you can always tweak it you know, mm -hmm. tweak it. And then I started adding like, people like that you can click on stuff. So a lot of these are affiliate sites actually. So um, you can go to clear and become an advisor affiliate with them. And um, I don't know if I show you. Is that, I don't yeah, know if you that's a good see, point but... too, is put in those affiliate links. Yeah, might yeah. as well. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I don't. I don't know how to get back to the screen I was just on. I'm going to stop sharing, yeah. but you get the idea. No problem. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so, thank you for sharing that. Cause that's so cool to see. Cause I know I've been getting them for a while too. And I just, and I, that is such a cool testimonial that that person started before pan, well, pandemic was happening, but before travel just halted. Um, and now it's like, it just takes a while to build it up. So that's really cool. Yeah. I love, love those stories. Um, but we have a lot of questions here. So I'm going to start going in on these. So, okay. Well, the first one was, so um, this was Danielle, when you were talking about your blog. So that kind of sparked up some questions because I think that's really helpful too, that you have SEO going. Um, but someone asked, Barb asked, do you put a date on your blog? And she just said, you know, I see so many blogs that are really old. And for me, that says the blog isn't updated and should be removed. So do you end up putting dates on yours? Um, I, I don't actually, but... Um, the personal part, like the top part is usually talking about something that's very timely. Um, so I think it's pretty clear that this is like a recent thing. 
Um, and then the other, like the bottom feature part is pretty evergreen. It's like places you want to go see in Hawaii. You know, it's like, those are always going to be great places. Like, yeah, it doesn't really need a date on that kind of stuff. So that's a good point. Actually, I don't know. Um, I don't know if like Wix automatically puts a date on it. I don't. Oh, maybe I should. That's a good point. <laughs> setting you can do, you know, inside your, your, you know, whatever your blog platform is. I don't put dates on mine either for that same reason. So it doesn't seem dated, you know, so that you have, it looks more like it's evergreen content. I think that's more acceptable now than when blogs were first created and they were kind of date based, but you had to be there every day. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. I know. I thought about that too. You know, just it's easy sometimes if you take them out, but that's nice that they're always usually timely. Um, and a uh, question, where, what was, where was I I'm trying to see where, with all the different questions? Oh, I know where it was. Okay. So uh, this is for you, Penny, on your, since you have um, emails just kind of set, ready to, uh, they're automated. Um, how often do you update your emails? Yeah. So um, I at least do it twice a year because I have designated work times built into my business that I go back through and refresh, but you know, I can do it more often than that. Um, thank you for asking that question. It, it, I love what Danielle said about, you know, reusing her content. So as I find, you know, new articles or new things that I want to add them into my automated emails, I like to keep them fresh as well and also personalized. So I will go back in and just refresh them, but they definitely get a tweak you know, twice a year and then as needed, you know, otherwise. Yeah, that's awesome. And Danielle, do you have any that you would have to, because yours are kind of updated all the time, correct? So that you don't really have to do too many updates there. I It's it's fresh every week. Mm-hmm. Fresh content. I fresh. love it. I just love it. This, it's so perfect to having the, you know, the automated and then um, doing yeah. new ones. Because you could also mix those together. I mean, that's also the which is just really, I mean, sky's the limit here. It's so awesome. Um, but so question for you both on this one is how many emails would you say are too many to send out? Or do you even think that, it, do you think that exists? Have an opinion on that? Yeah, I just, I send the one per week and then I'm also signed up for Virtuoso's um, marketing. Um, and I'm in, I'm in all currently all the chat, <laughs> all the communities through Virtuoso, which is cruise, uh, family and celebrations, adventure, wellness, and sustainability. And so each of those, they send out maybe like one a quarter or something like that, each one. So though, I mean, it's certainly not weekly. Virtuoso is very, very, very mindful to not, they keep track of how many emails they're sending out so they don't overburden people. Um, and I've had people respond, reply to certain Virtuoso emails like, oh, this was really cool. I didn't know about, about that. So just to clarify, Danielle, in case folks aren't familiar with Virtuoso email marketing, um, they look like they come from you. Virtuoso is doing right. it for you, but they look like they come from Nine Muses. I have the same thing, um, part of those communities. So those emails get sent out as well. I would consider them part, you know, part of my marketing plan as well. Um, and sometimes we know they're coming out in advance and sometimes we don't and who might get them. So those would be additional emails to what, you know, I would normally and what you would normally put out weekly. Um, I don't think you can put out too many emails. I love the way Danielle described it as leaving the lights on, you know, making sure folks knew the lights are on. Um, uh, our business coach also describes it as, you know, remember back in the days when you had Main Street and you've got the stores and, you know, this is just my, I think of my um, email marketing as my storefront. And so I, I don't expect them to walk through the door Every, you know, if I was in a brick and mortar, I wouldn't expect them to walk through the door every week. I don't necessarily expect them to need my email every week. They're not planning a trip every week, but I'm there when they need me and they know that I'm consistent and that I'm, I'm following up. It's a really interesting conversation in the travel industry. Um, I'm part of some blogging communities as well. And I love to share this story because if you interact with bloggers at all their question is not how many is too many well their question is how many is too many but it's more framed like i've already sent out two emails today do you think a third one's too many 
<laughs> they, they love to do daily, daily content or multiple times a day sending out to, um, you know, their audience. So it really is just a frame of mind and a mindset from where you're coming from. And I think somewhere up in there, someone said, well, what if they unsubscribe? And Danielle said it as well. Okay, that's all right. So right now is not a good time for us to connect and you're self-selecting out. That's all good, right? Um, yeah. That's their choice. Yeah. yeah. I know. I think, um, the, the frequency is maybe less a question than is the content, what's your content like? Does the content warrant the frequency? I mean, mm -hmm. you have to be sending high quality content to your list. Otherwise that's a problem. It's a very good point. Yeah. Can't just send out to send out and expect yeah. that, you know, everything will be there. Um, so another question here is on IFOs. So I wanted to, um, bounce around some ideas or different things of IFOs that you already do, both of you, or IFOs that you've seen people do, or just to give people ideas of like, hmm, what can I create? Because it's seriously so easy because you just create it once it's automated and then you get email addresses. It's awesome. Love it. Ooh, ooh I have one. <laughs> yeah. Yay. And this is how I can talk about Travify because oh, one, yes. <laughs> one of my IFOs is actually a, an itinerary that I built out in Travify um, that talks about East Coast travel. So I have a featured virtuoso destination for each state on the East Coast. That's where the majority of my clients are from. Um, and so that's something that I've advertised to before. Um, and when I go to deliver it, I'm just delivering them the link to that Travify um, itinerary. And then I whet their appetite with all these beautiful photos and descriptions of these resorts um, and then have a call to action for them to get in touch with me when they're looking to, you know, travel to one of those states. That's awesome. Got to say, that's a very easy way to use Travify. It's very simple. Yeah. Very, very easy. <laughs> What about you, Danielle? Do you, cause you have, I think you have one on your website, correct? I, I, sure yeah, I do it. it's a, it's access to an online, um, packing list. That's interactive. It, it came. So I chose that for two reasons. <laughs> one, um, I always meant to create a packing list template for my clients. And then it was just on my to-do list forever. <laughs> And I never got to it. And then um, this wonderful company called Imadri came out with an online one that's really interactive and fun. I'm like, ah, oh, that's great. Someone already made one. <laughs> and it's better than what I would have, you know, sent because it's customizable. And, uh, you know, you can put in your dates where you're going. It'll even tell you the weather of like your destinations. It can help you pack. And it connects to an online store that you can shop last minute if you need anything. Um, and then the store is actually an affiliate relationship. So I could, you know, it, I can monetize that. I mean, not most everyone is like doing Amazon, like let's be real, but, um, but it's there. It's another option, you know, and get creative during the pandemic. We're all just like, what are revenue streams <laughs> that yeah. we can look into besides getting on a plane? Cause there are no planes in the sky or, you know, what <laughs> yeah. I mean? so that's where the culinary passport classes came from. I'm like, great. Now you can shop in a store and maybe I'll get five bucks from that and go to wine.com and I'll make a dollar a bottle or whatever it is. Like you were just, you know, you were scrambling for anything. <laughs> yeah. whatever. That's, works. So that's my IFO is this it's and going back to that. It is a really cool online packing list. And I, I even use it myself. It's neat. That's really cool. And someone asked you, they said, um, where can you get the packing list at your website? But also what was the name of the company too? that? Um, I'm going to, I'll type it in the chat. Cause it's a, it's, okay. it's a, so not intuitive. Like I forget I, what it means. It, I, imagery. Here I'll, I'll read it means something, but I forget what it's supposed to mean. That's cool though. That's really yeah. neat. I, I, and it just is nice. That's a really good point though. It's that, uh, you know, sometimes with marketing, this could feel overwhelming. Like I have to do all this stuff. I don't know where to start, but it's also, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, you know, there might be things already out there or using like your so, consortia, like virtuoso, all that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I would say, yeah, that's another something, um, the consortia best of people have used that as an IFO before, but I would say if you write, if you write content, if you already have a blog or something, you already have an IFO. You just need to package it differently. I love, you know, Danielle, my favorite part of what you talked about was how you reuse your content 
you know, you write it once, but you use it four or five, six different ways. And I love to recycle content. And I think, you, you know, incorporating them into an IFO, um, you don't have to just have one IFO, you can have dozens of them um, because you want to reach people in different places or reach them where they're at or, you know, in different parts of the journey. So you probably already have an IFO, you know, somewhere in your arsenal, you just probably need to package it a little differently. And Canva, of course, is great for that. I love Canva. You're looking at Canva right now. I made this on Canva. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yes. We it's started amazing. using Canva. It's awesome. I tell yeah. everybody like, you don't have to be a graphic designer, like go use it. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. And since we only have five minutes left, um, which this went so fast, um, is uh, the one last question I have for both of you. And this might be kind of a hard one, might make you think, but what is your number one tip for email marketing that you'd like everybody to know or to take away today? And it could be something you've already said too, which is okay. Mine would be, pick a plan, you know, whatever it is. If, if you want to start with a weekly, you know, content, um, you don't have to do all the pieces that Danielle talked about, right? Pick, pick a plan and just start it. And then the next quarter or the next month or, or whatever, add layer something onto it. So don't be paralyzed in inaction, just start someplace. If you're going to start with an automation, um, map out your customer journey. Uh, look at how, how you can meet your customer at different aspects of their journey and then pick one place that you can meet them at and then start there. I love that. It's cool. That's good. Um, yeah, I echo, echo that. If you, if you saw my very first news news, it, it's the same formula, but I mean, it looks, it looks different. I mean, anyway, it evolves, you know, you mm -hmm. evolve as a human being, you evolve as a business owner, you deepen your understanding of your own niche. I mean, that's, it's meant to evolve over time, you know, and your clients will evolve over time and you have to, you know, stay nimble. Um, mine would be keep it consistent, you know, whatever you decide. Like I said, mine goes out Tuesday mornings only because I know I can get it out by every Tuesday morning. And I've never missed one since January 1 of 2019. Um, and just keep it consistent because that's, um, it's the, it, to me, in my mind, it's like, not only your lights on, oh, but I know, I know that my lights are on um, like every, it's not an exact equivalent, but like, you know, you can see the stores open from like nine to five and it's like, oh, well, it goes out every morning at 7 a.m. It's like, oh, the lights, it's like there, it just adds a consistency in the timing um, and, and yeah, and then schedule these other things. Like I have an, a little note in my calendar, like, don't forget, like post the Wanderlust, like schedule it. Like I've scheduled it on Facebook, um, I do a schedule post for the Wanderlust Wednesdays. Like don't forget to write it and, you know, just keep it consistent, block, block a time in your calendar. Calendar blocking is all the rage. I mean, it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I block, I block calendar time to, to do these things and however much time you need, you know, um, like Sunday nights basically, or like, my news news. And I know if I'm too busy by Sunday night, then I just move that calendar appointment to Monday night, <laughs> but it's still, yeah. I'm still blocking that time. Like I know it needs to get done. So I would just say, pick a plan, make it manageable. You know, your, your, what your bandwidth is and your capabilities are, and just keep it consistent, keep a schedule on it. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. And, and a good point of that too is, um, cause I see this all the time with any type of content is they're always like, just start it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's totally going to evolve really you well know, I've learned about that about okay. perfection. I've learned that, and this may resonate with a lot of others. I've learned that my version of this is good enough is a lot of people's version of like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, in your mind, like how, how like perfect it could be. But like even your own version of like, this is good. This is good enough. It blows a lot of people's socks off. So don't, don't underestimate your own talents. Don't, don't eat, maybe don't even strive for perfection. Cause that's a time waster. Like have it be something that you're not embarrassed about. Like you feel good about it. If you feel good about it, guess what? You feel good about it. Like that's yeah. good. That's okay. <laughs> Yes, that's a good point. I love that. Man, I hope after this, everyone just motivated, going to start new email plans, campaigns. 
all kinds of things. It's so awesome. And I just want to thank you both again so, so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. So I know you both are extremely busy. And I just want to thank you so much again for um, sharing, giving us an inside peek because you're, you're letting us in on your secrets. So thank you so much um, for all this. And and also, if anybody has um, questions after this, feel free to um, just send us an email at academy at travify.com. Um, but then I'll get this recording up by the end of the day and I'll get um, some updated, I'll get like Penny's link in there and, um, and Danielle, your link so people can sign up for newsletters, all that good stuff. So thank you so much again to both of you. This has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, it's always a pleasure. You're such a great host. Oh, I love thanks. Academy. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I didn't tell them to say that everybody I promise. Uh, no, that's, that's so awesome. Well, and it's also, it's just fun just to talk about marketing with, with fun people like yourself. So so thank you. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, too. And we'll see you again in like a month and then in 2022, which is crazy. See you oh then. My gosh. Bye. Oh my God. Bye. See you Bye. guys. Bye. Bye.